we're going to be talking about something that's going to make you go like, what? Oh my God. What? That's crazy. What? 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 <laughs> Kind of look like a douche today. Please disregard that look. I'm wearing camo on purpose and I'm wearing a trucker hat. It's not looking good for me. I was made aware of a phenomenon that has been targeting mainly TikTok influencers and I became morbidly curious about it. There are subreddits. Yes, yes, I said Reddit. Unfortunately, you have to be on Reddit to see this stuff. How unfortunate is that? There are subreddits that are dedicated to talking shit about random TikTok influencers. Yay. There are also subreddits that talk about specifically LA influencers, but there are also a plethora of subreddits that specifically target individual influencers or influencer groups. Did I make a drinking game out of how many times I say the word influencer in this video? Um, I'm not paying for your hospital bill. I personally, I don't know that many TikTok influencers that have been successful since Charlie D'Amelio. So these pages are about people who I have never heard of before. The only reason why I even know that these subreddits exist in the first place is because of some incident that happened with Vinny Hacker or some other person. I don't recall much about that situation, but I remember it being whack. But yeah, I don't know. I think one of the influencers was like in these subreddits talking shit about themselves. It was so weird. I don't know how Vinny Hacker tied into this, but somehow he got, I don't know. I didn't bother investigating too much into that, but we're not gonna be talking about them anyway. So don't, don't even worry your pretty little head about it, okay? But I, allegedly that did happen. These pages have been less than affectionately called snark pages and they can be brutal, like, Whoa. Never in my life have I ever thanked every star in the sky for not letting me be a big content creator because Christ, man, I wouldn't last a week. The posts in these subreddits can range from posts about how someone didn't like what an influencer wore in one of their TikToks to somebody making a laundry list of assumptions about an influencer's character. And their only evidence of this is, it came to me in a dream last night. I saw on one of these subreddits, somebody was talking about like how someone was like a pick me and they were so insufferable and annoying. And like, that's why they have no real friends and da 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 da. And uh, you wanna know what their, their, their reasoning for why they said that? You wanna know their reasoning for it? It was because they just didn't like how an influencer laughed in one of their TikToks. What? There are a million and one reasons why we can criticize influencers and I'm not condemning people for like that necessarily, if that makes sense. Like, yes, criticize away influencers. That's not a, like the, the general principle that that general action isn't my issue. It's, but but come on, come on. These snark pages, this is just loser behavior. Am I in the twilight zone? Like I, what? Like imagine getting so upset about someone flaring their nose too much in their videos. Yeah, yeah, I wish I was making up that example, but that's a real issue that people have with this one influencer, her name's Anna. It's to the point that her snark page specifically has a whole category dedicated to when she flares her nose too much. Like guys, it's a nose flare. And don't get me started with the comments under these posts. It is a bloodbath. Bitch, you're insufferable and no one wants to be around your fake ass squeals. That's why you have all this free time. She's not pretty enough to be f this fucking annoying and pick me. I agree, but I don't think we bring looks into it. This is not okay behavior, even for someone who is deemed to be pretty enough. And therefore it's irrelevant. The audacity to try to take a moral high ground. You're on a snark page and you want to take the moral high ground. That is hilarious. I needed that laugh. Thank you. And it wasn't even like they were defending Anna. They were just defending the act of like calling someone pretty enough to do this and that and the third, which I kind of agree with because a lot of people get away with doing some heinous stuff simply because they're pretty and they have like that pretty privilege. And so I agree with that, but I don't think that applies here. <laughs> I feel like I'm losing my mind. I feel like I'm being gaslit right now. I cannot be the only person on the planet who thinks this is so weird. But here's the thing, I don't know Anna or watch their content, so these jokers probably know more about her than I do. However, I have yet to see constructive criticism towards her or really any 
of these influencers. I saw a few things about overconsumption in Anna's snark page, but the posts were only about how Anna is showing off like an expensive product to their audience and being transparent about how much that particular item costs. That is overconsumption to them. Listen, I agree that overconsumption is a problem within consumers, especially Gen Z consumers, but come on, man. Like it's, it's clear that they don't want to have that conversation in a meaningful way. They're just upset that somebody can afford an, an, an expensive handbag. Also half of the stuff in the overconsumption category in Anna's snark page, it has nothing to do with overconsumption. Like one of the posts was just straight up criticizing how a tank top looked on her. Like unless I'm missing something and she owns 30 tank tops that look just like that, I don't really see the issue here or I don't really see how this is overconsumption. Yeah, I mean, I personally wouldn't wear that style of tank top either, but I wouldn't go out of my way to tell other people that it looks ugly on them unless they ask, <laughs> but I wouldn't tell it to them unprovoked. I've been cherry picking these posts, especially under Anna's snark page, but I need you guys to see ground zero, okay? So I found the snark page for Alex Earl. She's a big, she's like one of the few TikTok influencers that I'm actually vaguely aware of. And uh, we're gonna exploit their snark page together. Also, she has like a huge snark page, but I think that has, to do with the fact that she just has a lot of followers. This is Alex Earl Snark. They have 19,000 members, which is crazy. Here are the rules. Keep discussion civil. Interesting. Do not pick a fight with mods or be argumentative with other members. Please keep discussion civil. Attacks, insults, or slander will not be tolerated. Isn't the whole point of this subreddit to, to make insults? And, sl <laughs> and like attack Alex. I'm so, I guess maybe they're just talking about like attacking other people like within the like the server like Alex is fair game but attacking other members is just like a no-no. That is crazy. No hate speech. Okay, no racism, transphobia, or homophobia. Okay, at least they have some standards I suppose. No fan behavior. Interesting. The purpose of the sub is to snark. While we do allow positive remarks in context to snarking, we do not allow obsessive fan behavior. Fans will be banned. Clearly, you can't join this uh, subreddit with the sole purpose of defending Alex. Can someone tell me why she calls herself Big Al and what it means? Am I the only one who thinks that it's so cringe? She loves herself so much that she gives herself a nickname. So weird, it sounds like something a big bellied beer drinking man would call himself. What? Guys. It's just a nickname. Like, who cares? <laughs> like, 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 look at this. She needs to chill on the filler. The sad thing is that she's too young to even need fillers or Botox. She has no wrinkles and has no volume. Lost yet, she would regret it. Okay, this is the nicest thing I've seen so far. <laughs> She's not a beautiful girl. She has a horse face features, does not deserve the fame she has just being real. Why does she look like that? How the fuck does she drink this much? Is her stomach made of steel? I, I don't know. People just probably have like a higher tolerance than you. I don't know. Yeah, she does look a little different in this picture, but like she doesn't look that much different. I don't get the obsession with fake freckles. The fake freckles are so cringy. She keeps posting about how she's prone to bloody noses and she keeps getting them. Anybody thinks she's just constantly doing blow? Can never be partying that much and not be doing coke. It's just a lot of conspiracy theories surrounding Alex Earl and her life and her relationships and just, there is no grounding. There's no, it's just ridiculous. Look at this. Does it bother anyone else so much that she has a podcast but every single episode is a video? Like it's a YouTube video at that point. And the point of podcasts is to be convenient for listeners who drive who are driving, working out, etc. Here's the thing about podcasts these days. All of them are videos. Why am I defending Alex Earl? I'm just saying like, this isn't like a, a, a her specific thing. I don't know. It's like, I understand being frustrated about all these podcasts being video form because I remember when I first started seeing podcasts in video form, I was I was the exact same way. I was like, why are every why is every single podcast a video now? Yeah, but that's not like, a, that's not an Alex Earl specific thing. And thank you. Every podcast is like this now, it's not just her, but yeah, it's annoying. Like, I'm not saying you shouldn't be mad about that, but specifically targeting Alex just seems a bit much. It's, a bit, it's just a bit of a stretch. And look, this person is over here doing conspiracy theories about eating disorders that Alex may or may not have. Like, this is just ridiculous. I don't know much about Alex Earl. I don't watch Alex Earl's content, so I don't know if I, I, I can't say for certain whether or not Alex Earl has had issues with eating and like food in the past. 
but I just think it's just so insensitive and just so odd to have like conspiracy theories about whether or not she's eating. Now listen, I'm not above tea pages. During the pandemic, I was following this Instagram account called TikTok Room. <laughs> and listen, I was just being nosy about the biggest influencers at the time because these big time celebrities weren't going to big events, filming TV shows and touring. The TikTokers and the YouTubers, had, they were my last resort. They had to step up to the plate. Also, I just got tired of binge watching Avatar The Last Airbender, Black Clover, and Bojack Horseman. <laughs> oh, I had dibs on the muffins. I hid them in the produce section. Left them totally out in the open. That's hiding. How did you survive in Afghanistan? The difference between TikTok Room and the Snark pages is that one of them is more of a news format and the other one is just a place where anyone can say anything with little to no filter. I'm not saying that pages like TikTok Room or Pop Crave on Twitter are the holy grails that can do no wrong, but I'm saying that there's just a level of decorum with their posts in comparison to these narc pages. People who are commenting under the, the pop crave TikTok room posts. It's a mix of fans, haters, and people who are just indifferent. So it seems a lot less harsh. And if someone is being rude, unprovoked on a Tuesday afternoon under a pop crave tweet, the fans usually keep them in check. On the other hand though, these individual snark pages are made in bad faith and solely exist to criticize certain influencers in a safe space. We all saw the Alex Earl uh, rules, no fans allowed. They wanna be able to hate without somebody criticizing them for the fact that they're, they're miserable and they're hating on somebody for existing. Two years ago, I made a video about whether or not influencers deserve empathy. What is with me in this Bass Po Shop hat? Don't ask me what I said in the video. I don't remember, nor do I have any desire to revisit it. And yeah, it's just, it's no. Any video I made before Christmas kids, I'm just, I don't acknowledge it. They don't exist to me. Uh, but I think I did say something about fairly criticizing influencers versus joining a bandwagon and hating somebody for no reason. I don't know, I probably didn't say that at all. I could have just totally just be making that up. The script for that video is lost media at this point. So I generally don't remember what I said, but world, in the year 2024, hi, that's me, is saying that these snark pages are weird. It has nothing to do with me defending influencers as a whole because I could not possibly care any less about them as a species. It's about the principle. People who view influencers as subhuman and assume that fame as a replacement for feelings it's weird. It's weird, it's odd behavior. Stripping somebody of their humanity simply because they're in a better place in life than you are is just odd. People assume that since they have wealth, they shouldn't be unhappy because, hey, at least you're rich. Now listen, I understand the mentality behind this and I'm not saying that people who are in crappy situations should worship the ground that influencers walk on because they're still human at the end of the day. Not saying that at all. Trust me, my life would be 50 times better if somebody wired me $30,000 right now. <laughs> but unfortunately, that's just like not how humans work. Money can't solve everything. It can definitely help you gain access to services that can help you solve something, but it can't guarantee you that something's gonna get fixed. My best example of this is mental health. Yes, influencers have access to therapy and other resources that could help somebody deal with a mental illness, but that doesn't mean that they're gonna be cured simply because they can throw money at the problem. Same thing with insecurities, anxieties, all of the it is. <laughs> money doesn't always make a person less of a person. There are crappy people out there with a crap set of money and I'm not saying that we should be nice to everyone all the time. Have you heard the old saying, the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. I wish more people could understand that it's okay to not care about someone or something and just move on. In this instance, being indifferent doesn't mean that you like something or approve of something. It just means that you can coexist with something without making a big stink about it. Do I like all influencers? Hell no, not at all. But I don't make that fact known unless it's relevant and contributing to a larger issue. Actively disliking someone for petty reasons has got to be the most unproductive use of your time. And what is the end game here? Like I'm failing to see the point of any of this. Why would you even bother to make yourself miserable by surrounding yourself with influencers that you don't even like? Like you're constantly engaging with their posts in order to see them anyway. The way these people are acting, you would think that you had to pay to use the block button. I don't know. I just think this whole thing is just bizarre to me. Are we allergic to filling out job applications? 
Like, don't you have geometry homework that you should be doing? Listen, I'm not a fan of hustle culture, but it should be a crime to be this bored. Here's my general consensus. These snark pages, they're just mean. <laughs> like, they're just, they're just mean. I don't like being put in a position where I have to defend TikTokers, but you've left me with no choice. Unless someone is being a bigot or something, I don't see the point in giving someone the time of day just because they annoy you. Like, dedicating a whole subreddit just because you find someone annoying? That is so weird. I'm running out of adjectives, guys. I'm running, I'm sorry. Limited vocabulary over here. I'm trying my best. I'm just, again, <laughs> I'm not defending these influencers because I care about them, please. No, unfortunately, unfortunately, I was born with an extra appendage. Not, not, not that. No, I'm talking about the empathy bone. Maybe I'm soft or something, but I don't know. I just cannot fathom being so comfortable with saying horrible things about anyone especially if the verbal harassment doesn't fit the crime. Hating somebody to the point of nitpicking the way that someone breathes, that has got to be so exhausting. Who has the energy to even care about something like that? Like this has to be some sort of disease. I hope that these Redditors get well soon, but let's face it, they're on Reddit. It was over for them before it even began. And for the millionth time, because I really don't want people thinking that I'm some sort of dick writer here, I don't like influencers as a whole. Some of them are okay, but there are a lot of stigma against influencers for good reason. Some of them are straight up arrogant the second that they get money. Some of them abuse their audience and misuse their platforms. Some of them get famous for being mediocre. Some of them really do promote overconsumption by doing $500 clothing hauls every two weeks. Some of them are scammers. Some are out of touch with reality. Some choose to be ignorant and ignore global issues. Some of them are straight up racist <laughs> and don't care. Um, and some of them are two-faced. You know, some of them, you know, they're being all happy-go-lucky on camera and then they're insufferable when they're at like influencer parties or whatever. I could go on and on and on, but we'd be here all day if I did. All right, I just think that snark pages are pointless. All right, posting on them makes you look like a loser. Like, how do you not feel embarrassed when you go out of your way to do something like this? You're letting that influencer live in your head rent free and they're getting the last laugh. Like, yes, you're making fun of their concealer, but at the end of the day, they're getting the last laugh because they're making money and you're miserable on reddit.com. We need to start looking in the mirror and start thinking about our life choices. I am all for criticizing creators and influencers, especially when there's an actual conversation to be had there. These snark pages are just sad to watch. Do you see this? This is my journal. Instead of bugging people with my unwanted thoughts and feelings, I just write them down and keep it to myself. We're losing recipes, people. Let's bring back journaling. Let's bring back not oversharing online. Got it for five bucks. Look at that, look at, look at those. Look at the, look at what I, look at this. Yeah. Journal reveal. Whoa. That's my video. I just wanted to talk about that. I just don't condone hating people for no reason, even if they are influencers and they just seem like the bottom of the barrel, the easiest targets. And I don't know, I know celebrities probably have like pages like these and on a larger scale. And I don't know, I just think it's just weird. I think that we should not put energy into hating somebody because you don't like the color of their dress when th that they wore to a movie premiere. I think that energy should be used towards when that influencer or that celebrity actually does do something that's messed up. Have you tried crocheting? Let's pick up a hobby. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like the video, like the video, like the person, subscribe to the video, subscribe to the person. Do whatever you want. I don't care. All the links to my social medias will be linked down in the description, as well as ways to support Palestine, Sudan, Yemen, and Congo. Uh, thank you. And, uh, I'm gonna go take a nap. <laughs>